Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And next to me is A911. Literally, look at the number plate. And we're here on the ever stunning and ever special Black Rock Sands Beach in North Wales. I remember this place very fondly. It's somewhere that I used to come with my family when I was younger, who used to bring a car, come to a week in North Wales, climb Snowdon, which is just over there. And my dad would always bring us to this beach and with my mum in the front of the car, proceed to do donuts in his then Toyota events. It's quite an impressive thing to do it in that, whilst my mum was screaming and me and my brother in the back absolutely laughing our heads off. And so that's the first thing I think of when I come back here and I haven't been back here for a long time. But today, amazingly, I'm, I'm here in this Porsche 911 Carrera press car. This is a particularly special car as well, not just because of the number plate, and not because it's sort of some crazy, expensive, extravagant example, it's quite the opposite. It's a purist's dream, this 911. This is the entry-level Carrera, which is the cheapest one you can buy. And this one literally has no options on it. I think it's got the power steering plus option, which just lightens the steering for maneuvering. But apart from that, it's completely bog standard. This yellow is a standard color, no extra money for that. Everything you see is as a 911 Carrera would come from the factory if you put nothing on it, which is a very hard thing to do with Porsches. If you've ever been onto the website, gone onto the configurator, let's say you start at 100,000 pounds, it often ends up being 20, 30,000 more than that because, well, you can add so many things and they don't give you much for free. But in this case, this is very basic and it's very, very special because it really just gives you an insight into what the 911 is before anything else. And I have to say, won't be a surprise to you, I've just been having the most incredible time here in North Wales with this car. Now, I'll let you into a little bit of a story. My original plan with this car was to take it all the way up to John O'Groats, and then tomorrow, as tomorrow is actually the summer solstice as I'm filming this, drive it all the way from John O'Groats at sunrise to Land's End and try and get there before sunset. Now that was a video I attempted two years ago in a Range Rover, which, <laughs> surprise, surprise, broke down. And so I was unable to complete that challenge. But yesterday when I was driving up to John O'Groats, I just felt really sad that I was basically going to be using my week with this car to just drive on motorway or to just cruise, just drive. I just couldn't bear the thought of going all the way up to John O'Groats, sleeping, getting in the car at four in the morning, um, tomorrow morning, and then just driving it to Land's End and, and not really getting to enjoy it. And so I sort of had a bit of a crisis and pulled over at a service station and asked you guys on Instagram what you thought I should do with this car. And many, many, many of you said North Wales. And I was only, coincidentally, a couple of hours from North Wales at the time. And so I came over here and I've spent the last 24 hours absolutely living my best life with this car, driving it around some of my favorite roads through Bedgeller and then up past Snowdon, the Penny Pass, and it's just been wonderful. And so what you think is probably going to happen now is I'll do this little piece to camera, get in the car, drive off, and then proceed to show you some incredible scenery and some incredible footage of this car on the mountain roads. But again, another story and a bit of a confession, you're not gonna see that. I'm going home after I film this piece to camera on this beach. This is the end of my trip here in Wales because when I'd been driving this morning and, and yesterday, I was having somewhat of such a personal, spiritual, uplifting experience driving this thing around the mountains. I just couldn't bring myself to film it. It felt wrong. I just wouldn't have been able to do it justice. I think that's more the thing. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna drive it home. I'm gonna sleep it off. And then a few days time, I'm gonna find some nice roads nearer to me where I can tell you a little bit more about this car. But in short, from my time here, take my money, basically. If you don't wanna watch on any further, that's essentially the conclusion.
Well, hello everyone. I'm now back from North Wales and, well, to cut a long story short, I've just had the most incredible week driving, daily driving this Porsche 911. As an all-rounder, considering the price point of, of this car, this is by far and away the, the best car I've ever had the pleasure of, of daily driving. It's almost perfect in every single way. You get to do one of these downshifts here onto the dual carriageway. <laughs> it's got a perfect blend of comfort and sensibility, but then mixed in with a little bit of crazy as well. The build quality is second to none. Everything feels very well thought out. I love the view you get from the driver's seat, the sort of top of the bonnet you can see, and it stretches all the way across. It feels how it looks to drive. The seats are super comfortable, but they're also supportive and, and quite huggy when you, when you need them to be. And this being a 911, the engine's obviously at the back, that's where all the weight is. And so the turn in is, is like nothing else, really. And this model only has a 7,500 RPM red line but it still has the same fizz as you get in a Cayman GT4 or a GT3 Touring. I've actually driven both of those cars and I did videos with them on the channel. I'll link them on the screen. But in those cars, the sort of last thousand RPM, which for them is like eight to 9,000, there's a real sort of metallic fizz is how I always describe it in these Porsches. And th th this still has it, although it's six and a half to seven and a half thousand RPM. Here we go. 5,000 RPM, I'm on 30% throttle here. 6,000, here it starts. That last 1,000 RPM, it sounds like nothing else. It's such a distinctive Porsche sound. I think you either love it or you hate it, but for me, I absolutely love it. My first impressions when I picked this car up from Porsche Reading was how big it was. It felt really wide, and it is the widest 911 yet, the 992 generation. Actually, if you went for a turbo, it'd be even wider than this. But very quickly, you get used to it. It's extremely confidence-inspiring. I think it's just the way that it reacts to your inputs when turning. Because everything is so sensitive, the throttle response, the brakes, the steering, it feels like a much smaller, nimble car, say like a NB Mazda MX-5. Very light car, not much to it. But this sort of disguises itself as something more akin to that because despite its size and its now weight, it feels so light on its toes. And yeah, I just, I can never get enough of the way it just responds to every little steering input that you give it. So instantly when I look at other 911 models, this being the entry level Carrera, it's rear wheel drive, which is great, I like that. But it's only, I say only, 385 PS or horsepower or thereabouts. Obviously if you move up to Carrera S you get 450 and then you move up to turbo and you're in the 600 region very quickly. And my inner child or my inner petrol head says, well, you know, next time I ask for a car from Porsche GB, I, I want one of those turbos. I want one with, with all the power. But realistically, on the road, this 385 is actually plenty. And I'd say one step further than that, it's about perfect because it is absolutely still enough power to kick you into the back of your seat like that, especially with all the torque that this engine has. But you can pull yourself all the way through first and second gear, throw it into a corner, and you're 
still within the speed limit and that is a gorgeous Aston Martin DB5. Wow. I had an Aston Martin DB5 as my wedding car back in March and that was an incredible experience to drive that. And also because the, the front of this car is so communicative, I'm driving now on, on a road that I literally don't know, but I'm excited for each corner to present itself because you feel really, here we go, this is a nice, yeah. So I went into that corner not quite appreciating how tight it was, but it doesn't really matter how much you ask of the, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how much you ask of the car, it, it seems to just respond and it's very predictable. I think anyone could could get into to this to this 911 Carrera even though it's rear wheel drive and drive it pretty pretty close to the limit almost straight away it's it's that user friendly and i think that's something that i i really enjoy about uh, this 911 probably noticed by now that this is the PDK or the automatic gearbox you can still get 911 obviously these days with a manual which is amazing something that BMW also do as well which is really nice to see however I personally love this PDK box and I think if I was buying one of these it's, it's what I would choose over the manual mainly again down to the communicative nature of it and and because it is so responsive and so fast to react to the inputs on the paddles, you can drive it like you would a manual. You really use the gearbox a lot. And obviously with it being PDK, it is a lot faster than I would ever be able to shift if I had a stick here. Now I think this is particularly unique to this exact car because one of the color, bright yellow, and mainly I think secondly because of the number plate A911. I've never driven a car that gets so much attention. I mean I would genuinely say 25 or 30 percent of people that are behind me, someone in the passenger seat or sometimes the driver, is taking a photo. But I don't think that would be usually the case on a a 911 without a crazy private registration or potentially one that's in a sort of less vibrant specification let's say but you might think you know i'm going to buy a 911 because i want something that's going to be really you know usable pretty understated and you know i can just get in and go and have a have a great bit of fun and that's exactly what a 911 does but for, for me and what surprised me a little bit with this car is it feels more special than that you know, I thought it, I didn't, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't think it would be particularly exciting. I thought most of the time I would have it in automatic and, and just let it do its thing and, you know, have a lovely time of it. But it is a really exciting, engaging, and it, feel, it feels special, a special car to drive. And so for me, having this yellow paintwork as well just adds to that whole feeling. And I think it suits the character of the car because like I say, it, it is quite an exciting thing to drive. And so having the bright color, makes sense just love slowly building the rpms that last thousand is just magical just magical another great thing about the whole porsche sort of platform the the 992 is yes they've gone very digital a lot of the functions are now within this central display you now have this sort of five dial thing you've still got the analog rev counter right in the middle which is really nice and actually if you've ever driven one of these you know what i mean but it's extremely satisfying to watch the needle just the way it reacts and moves is really i like it it, it makes me happy inside but the way the steering wheel is is designed the size and and these sort of auxiliary screens at the side one slight issue is that you cannot see them just when I'm driving like this. I, I can't see 
the screen. So on here, I've only got a compass and our altitude, something I'd, I'd quite like. And then here, actually more importantly, I've got the fuel level and, and our remaining range. But I do have to, you can see, I have to lean like this to, to look at what it's saying, which is a, a little bit of an issue. But my initial point was gonna be that although it's gone quite digital, as with everything now, I mean, that's just how it is, most, and I say most, there's a few things that I wish still had buttons, most of the things you need to use regularly, such as the driving modes, are on buttons, which, which is really good, really big bonus, such as heated seats here, still two physical buttons for the heated seats each side, and so that's great, because on some of the other cars now, you have to go into a screen or a display to actually choose your driving mode. And like we have the adaptive dampers here. So if I select those, it just firms everything up a bit. And I'd say 90% of the time, even if you're pushing a little bit, you don't want them on. All it does is make the ride firmer. But when you are pushing the car a bit and, and leaning on it in the corners, absolutely you want this on because it just gives you a little bit more feel. You can sense what the car's doing just that bit more, which is, is, is vital, I think, when you're pushing the car. And then traction control. We've got the button right there to turn PSM off if we should so wish. But I'm actually gonna leave it on because it's a very lenient traction control system. I don't think I've actually been driving fast enough to trigger the PSM to, to kick in because the thing is just so grippy and it is actually riding on the latest Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are just perfect. Another thing I really enjoy with, with this 911 is the throttle response. A lot of these turbocharged or supercharged modern cars, they just, have this crazy big null zone on the throttle pedal. What I mean by that is that you sort of depress the pedal maybe 20% down and nothing happens. And then 20 to 25% is where you want to be, the sort of gentle you know, introduction of power. But if you just go slightly beyond that, it's all the power. And it's really hard to, to drive these modern sort of turboed cars smoothly or, or how you want. But in this, it doesn't feel turbocharged at all. It feels naturally aspirated the way they've done the, the throttle, which is a real big bonus, I think, because I've not driven anything like this, this new that does that so well. But here we go, it's a wide car. You can hear the parking sensors triggering now as we try and get past a Mini, which is not so Mini. So yeah, they've got the throttle response bang on. The brake feel is bang on also and the handling is is just sublime because it's a 911 i mean it, it wouldn't be anything but brilliant but unlike 911s of old it doesn't really do that thing where you you start feeling a little bit twitchy and nervous as you get faster they start to feel really light on the steering and really light on the nose and you know i wouldn't want to be doing a top speed run on the autobahn in, in one of those let's put it that way but this is solid as anything. Now, obviously I've not been into Germany, so I've not been able to take this up to any serious speeds at all, but certainly at motorway speed in the UK, it feels just firm, solid, dead straight as anything. And I would love actually to take one of these to the Autobahn and, and get it up to some serious speed, because I think it would handle it so, so well. But just to top it all off with, with the handling of this car, because the steering wheel is so small, you don't have to sort of fidget around with your hands anymore. You can throw it in a little bit easier. It feels like you've got, again, less weight to sort of maneuver because the wheel is small. I mean, this is closer to the size of one of those Logitech wheels that you would have on your Xbox or gaming PC than it does to a wheel on a conventional car. I mean, compared to my Jag, for example, I could probably put a 30 centimeter ruler each side, <laughs> which is more like where my hands would be if I was driving that car. And because this is a, a six cylinder car as well, when you're cruising along, the fuel economy is, is really, really good. Actually, when I was driving the other day up to Scotland, and obviously I didn't make it to Scotland for reasons I explained earlier, I was averaging actually around 40, 41 miles per gallon, which I was driving very carefully and, and you know, 65, 70 miles an hour, because I was just cruising, I had a long drive ahead of me, but I was averaging just over and around 40 miles per gallon, which is so impressive again for something that gives you so much performance. So it really is the perfect car in, in, in so many ways. If you wanna take passengers, 
or you want to go to Ikea and buy the shop floor, obviously it's going to fall down there, doesn't really have any leg room in the back and you've just got that one boot in the front which is generous but yeah you're not going to be bringing any wardrobes home but for everything else for your commute to work I couldn't think of a better thing because again it's that perfect balance of comfort but then when your favorite song comes on the radio and you just want to have a little bit of a, a hoon and change down through the gears a bit it's fantastic absolutely fantastic out of the box I'd say the 911 it is almost perfect I cannot think of anything brand new that I would want more than this and I'm not just saying that and so I encourage you guys to definitely you know get the keys to one of these if you can and, and have a go because you'll be blown away by it there's like I say I'll emphasize again there's there's nothing new anymore that I've driven recently that gives the same sense of feel. I think feel is, is, is the, the main word. Lots of new stuff is quite numb now. It's very assisted, very electrical. And although this is in a lot of ways, all of those things, it still feels like a real petrol heads car. And I think that's why the sort of people that do buy Porsche are real petrol heads and sometimes a little bit anarchy or nerdy, might you say. But that's for a reason, because these are still real driver's cars and yeah like I say I can't believe this is just the bog standard entry level one let's give it one last blast shall we <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this essentially what has been a love letter to the 911 I've obviously had an absolutely fantastic experience in this car. I've tried to find flaws with it, and I think I've mentioned a couple, but there really isn't. There really aren't any flaws. It's, uh, it's perfect. And even Katie, my wife, absolutely loves this thing. Next time I'm gonna get her on the insurance because I think she'd, she'd really love to I think she'd really enjoy driving it actually. I think it'd be almost the perfect car for her as well. Make sure you're subscribed actually if you're one of my 75% of regular viewers that are not subscribed. Just have to click that, that red button below the, the video. And yeah, huge, uh, massive shout out to Porsche GB, James in particular, for facilitating this loan because it's just been wonderful. I really do appreciate it, so thank you. And until next time guys, uh, I'll see you all very, very soon.